Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service this morning. It's good to have you all here joining us this week. And what a glorious day it is, isn't it? And as I'm often heard to proclaim as the psalmist, this is the day that the Lord has made. So by all means, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come to the water, all who thirst, come all who are weary. Come all who yearn for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ has washed over us and our gracious and holy God beckons and blesses us. Drink deeply of these living waters. Allow Christ to dwell in your hearts through faith. Glory to you, O God, glory to you. Let us pray. You touch our lives, God, in many ways. You raise us up when we feel down and discouraged. You give us courage when we are afraid. You ground us when we are on edge. You inspire us when we lose our sense of who we are. You accompany us in the many and varied journeys we undertake day by day. Be with us in this time of worship and give us the direction we need to face the future with hope and energy. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I now invite Margita to inspire and empower us through her music. Margita.
Well, now you're tugging at my heartstrings, Margita. Didn't we sing that in the choir just last year? Oh, Lord knows, don't we miss the choir? Oh, can't wait to get back to it. Remember the words of Jesus who said, Freely you have received, freely give. You heard these words, didn't you? You heard these words in your heart this week, and you responded. Some of you made donations to the church through our website. You clicked the donate button, or perhaps you used the e-transfer capability. Others donated through PAR, pre-authorized remittance. Still others dropped an envelope through the mail slot in the south door of the church. However you gave, know this, you gave generously, and we thank you for that. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, by your generosity we have received all that we have and all that we are. Grant that we may so use the things which you have entrusted to our care, that we may become more and more your children in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus also said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us bring to God in prayer our burden of sin and our yoke of guilt, confident and trusting in the spirit of grace. Again, let us pray. Forgive them all, O Lord, our sins of omission and our sins of commission, the sins of our youth and the sins of our riper years, the sins of our souls and the sins of our bodies, our secret sins and our more open ones, our sins of ignorance and surprise, and our more deliberate and presumptuous sins, the sins we have done to please ourselves and the sins we have done to please others, the sins we know and remember and the sins we have forgotten, the sins we have tried desperately to hide from others and the sins by which we have made others offend. Forgive them, O Lord. Forgive them all. Amen. You must know this, that anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe because this is the good news of the gospel. And thanks be to God. I now invite Arlene Bryce Hansen to come forward to read to us from Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. The passage I'm about to read is in effect a prayer. It is Paul's prayer for the congregation at Ephesus, who apparently have suffered much personal hardship and pain. Interceding on their behalf, Paul prays that God may grant them strength in their inner being and that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith. Reading now from the third chapter of Ephesians, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know that love of Christ that surpasses knowledge 
so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far, far more than all we ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Arlene. I've got a biblical image in mind. Jesus is standing outside a gothic style, weather-beaten, paint-peeling, heavy wooden door. Around the door is a tangled mess of vine with half-eaten leaves and a whole lot of spiders crawling inside. There's no handle on the outside of the door, just a wooden latch on the inside. In my image, Jesus is patiently knocking at the door. But no one answers. On the inside, all I see is a shadowy figure crouched on the floor at the foot of the door. Who is cowering there, I wonder, just inside that door? Who is refusing to open it? Is it you? Is it me? I wonder sometimes if it isn't each one of us. I wonder if each one of us from time to time is afraid to open the door or indifferent, or not quite sure of what is to be gained if one opens the door. The door, of course, opens to our heart. The door is heavy. It is weather-beaten. It is paint is peeling because of all life's hardship and pain. Life's storm, so to speak, continues to pummel its surface. I can scarcely withstand the pain as it is, I think to myself. Why would I open the door and allow the pain to move deeper into my core? I just couldn't take any more pain. I couldn't take my parents' disappointment if they were to learn that I was pregnant at such a young age. I couldn't take my family's scorn if they were to learn that I fell off the wagon last week. I couldn't take any more loss of dignity and risk losing more and more of my independence if my family was to learn just how many times I stumble and sometimes fall during the course of the day. I can scarcely withstand the pain and the hardship as it is. I certainly couldn't take any more. And yet I know, I know that I can't remain locked inside that door, life's door, forever. I can't continue to shut all of life out. I know that the door won't hold forever. It's now weakening at the hinges. Battered and worn, it will soon begin to rot. Afraid as I am to confront my life's Goliath, I know that I need to open my door and let Christ in. Christ, who is my David and my slingshot. I need to open my door. I need to open it so that once again I might find life's beauty, life's magic. And I need an ally to help me push it shut 
when once again life's storm begins to rage. Next time, perhaps, even more fiercely. I need to let Christ's spirit into my heart. I need to let Christ's spirit guide me back into life's beauty. Away from fear and anxiety and back into the sun. Away from shame and back into acceptance. Away from the dark and back into the light. The critically acclaimed author, she's one of my favorites, Annie Lamott. She knows this well, and she tells of her profound experience of allowing Christ to indwell within her. Anne was unmarried, pregnant, and decided to have an abortion. She coped with the pain in her usual way, by smoking dope and getting drunk. When she started hemorrhaging a week later, she sobered up fast. It was that night that Anne became aware of someone in the room with her. She writes, the feeling was so strong that I actually turned on the light for a moment to make sure no one was there. Of course there wasn't. But after a while, in the dark again, I knew beyond any doubt that it was Jesus that was in the room. What Anne felt was appalling to her friends and family, none of whom were Christian. They were all like the, the Ephesians, worldly and sophisticated, and in need of no one but themselves. But Jesus remained in the corner, watching me, she writes, with patience and with love, and I squinched my eyes shut, but it didn't help, because not, that's not what I was seeing him with. Anne had been attending service for a few Sundays now. She was drawn to a uh, funky little church, mostly by its music. The next Sunday she went back. She could not escape the feelings. She writes, it was as if the people were singing in between the notes, weeping and joyful at the same time. And I felt like their voices or something was rocking me in its bosom, holding me like a scared kid. And I opened up to that feeling and it washed over me. When Anne got back to her home, her houseboat, she opened the door, hung her head, and said to Jesus, screw it, I quit. And she actually said this out loud. All right, all right, you can come in. You can come in. Now as a minister, I can never fall under the illusion that just because we're all here in church or watching a church service, that we all have let Christ's spirit live in our hearts. Nor do I fall under the illusion that you or I just, or can't just, push Christ's spirit right out of our hearts as we begin to show the telltale signs of arrogance or spiritual laziness or even doubt. Of course, letting Christ into our hearts to save us from pain is one thing. But once he's in, 
Once he's in. We know that he's going to start looking around, isn't he? He's going to start looking for what needs changing in our lives. Oh, ho, oh, oh. And that, I think, is often the issue. Whether or not we are prepared to let Christ change us. Let's face it, having Christ dwell in our hearts is like having a new person move into our house. If that person is just visiting, it's all rather easy, isn't it? You simply offer him hospitality and you try to practice good manners. <laughs> but if that person moves in to stay, everything changes. At first, you might try to hold on to your familiar patterns and your routines. And the new member in your household may work very hard to accommodate you and stay out of your way. <laughs> but dimes to donuts, eventually he will make his mark. Conversations change. Relationships realign. Household tasks increase and responsibilities shift. So it is when Christ moves in to the hearts of Christians. I'm warning you. He's not there to merely tweak old patterns. Everything's about to change. But I am here to suggest that the potential gain is worth the risk. To gain a refreshed spirit is worth the risk of having to change one's life or having to endure the disappointment and the judgment of others. As we work with Christ through our problems, Having Christ in our heart is to have Christ as our ally and I think our best advocate. How's that? Our best advocate. Christ is our, I think, our best defense against any Goliath that may live outside our door. As well as any Goliath <laughs> that may reside within it. Take a second, take a second and consider how Christ met his cross. Now feel his courage replace your fear. Consider how Peter denied Christ time and time again. And yet Christ forgave him. Now feel Christ's forgiveness replace your shame. You feel that? Consider all the hardship Christ endured during his ministry. Now feel Christ's strength supplant your weakness. So, if you find yourself crouched on the floor at the foot of your door, stand. Take hold of the wooden latch, lift it, pull open the door, clear away the vine, chase away the spiders, take hold Take hold of Christ's hand and pull him with all your strength into your heart.
If you must, yell, screw it, I quit. Come on in. Then wait. Wait patiently. Wait in the stillness. And I venture to saying, soon you will feel your heart beginning to lift. And I guarantee that with all that courage, forgiveness, and strength now residing within you, you will in turn become a window through which Christ's light can shine unto others. You will become a vehicle by which Christ's love can be shared. People will begin to see the face of Christ in you. And more and more, you will begin to see the face of Christ in others. So let me close with this. In Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, he prayed that God might strengthen their inner being with power through God's spirit. He prayed that Christ might dwell in their hearts through faith. Well, that, my brothers and sisters, is my prayer for you as well. That is my prayer for you. And I will close also with, Amen. Let it be. Let's sit back now and listen to a beautiful hymn, one of my favorites, I Feel the Winds of God. And this particular rendition is sung by Jody Penner. Jody Penner. I feel the winds of God today, today my sail I lift, though heavy oft with drenching spray, I'm torn with many a
I'm so glad you were able to join us. And until next week when we gather again, be well, be safe, and be kind. Go in peace and in faith and in love, trusting even where you have not seen. And may God, our guardian, protect you, Christ, our healer, restore you, and the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and forevermore. Go in peace.